I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to unmute. How are you, Jason? Welcome. I'm good, Dale. How are you? Can you hear me? Uh, you yeah, I can. I see a little of uh, a picture of you. Have you been in Zoom before, buddy? I have indeed. I'm chillax. Okay. You could share your screen. Oh, sorry. Um, That's okay. Know. It's a green box. I share screen. Oh. Uh, you weren't planning to? Uh, sorry. Uh, Laura, no, I haven't. Uh, do you have okay. a screen that you want to show us while we're talking about your day trade methodology? Right. Sorry. I thought we were just having a chat. Um, okay. We could have a chat. Okay. I didn't realize it would be better if we could model. see see your setup, but yeah, I can do that, but it's going to take me a little while. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. All right. for that. We were just okay. A chat. All right. Well, then let's have a chat, uh, Jason. You've been you're a veteran. You've been around forever. Uh, maybe uh, not quite as long as me because you look <laughs> twenty years younger. We uh. were showing your picture, so um, uh, I'll share my screen while you're waiting. Uh, why don't you tell us how you got involved in trading, how you got involved, and who were your influences in your okay, career? Well, I've been around for about 33 years. I started when I was 19 in London on the trading floors. So um, uh, that was a good, good grounding. Uh, actually, I, was, uh, I started in 1987, and within a few months, I actually lost my job. Um, so that was, I thought that was the end of my career in financial markets, but I was lucky enough to be taken on by a market making company and that turned out to be pretty good for me because I got into market making, whereas before I was working as a broker. So you so, remember that day in October? I do, yeah. I guess you were trading then too, were you, Dale? Yeah, yeah. I went down, I had an office in, you know, a regular type office building where banks were downstairs. I went down to the bank to see if it was open, I go to every. I went in there, and they go. I say, "Is everything okay?" And they go, "What are you talking about?" So, they didn't. You know, uh, <laughs> I was. You know, thought the world was coming to an end. Anyway, uh, what a great buying opportunity you turned out to. I mean, maybe it was kind of like the mold for every other panic we've had. Although that was very short lived. Uh, kind of like what happened with COVID. Uh, this spring. Uh, how did you handle that? Uh, I know you're a day trader, so, um, you know, the worst thing that could happen in, as for a day trader is that you're wrong during the day and you're out and you take your losses and you start over. Uh, could it be what turned you into a day trader was uh, what could happen position trading and you want to be able to sleep at night. What drove you to that finding that fit your personality the best? Actually, you're right. That's a really good question. And you hit the net on the head because I was an options trader on the floor and I was trading uh, stirs, short-term interest rate contracts. So you just always had a position across so many different strikes and so many different months. Yeah. So even when I was on holiday, I was never really on holiday. I was always in contact with the floor. Um, you could never really have a flat position. And if then there was a move, suddenly all your gammas and your, you know, your thetas. Can ruin a vacation, can't it? Uh, yeah, it did ruin a couple, actually. <laughs> Where I uh, came back significantly poorer than I was when I <laughs> left. So, um, so, yeah, I guess after about 15 years of options trading, I thought, you know, I'm really, I, I guess I probably was burnt out, really. And I thought I could trade futures because I was an options trader. I kind of thought, hey, you know, trading futures can't be that difficult. It's one price. Um, but it was a completely different skill set. And I actually was trading my own money and lost about 30 grand real quick. So probably was a little bit arrogant and, thought, and then realized, wow, this is nothing like I, I, what I'm used to. So yeah. I had to go back to the drawing board. I didn't actually want to go back to trading options. I probably was a little bit lazy. Um, and so, yeah, that's actually how I got into technical analysis because I realized whatever I knew about options trading wasn't really going to help me in trading futures or Forex or anything like that. So I started reading books about technical analysis. And, um, yeah, that was probably about 20 years ago. I started to study it. About 15 years ago, it really became uh, kind of what I do today now, um, providing you know, technical analysis um, every morning. Uh, which books did you read? I'm getting a question from one of our viewers, uh, or would you recommend? That's a very good question. I can't really remember that far back. I do remember I had um, 
I think it's called the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns or something like that. So it's a big, thick, hardback book with a black cover. And um, I basically trawled through that. It's, it's, a, it's a really good book because it gives you the probabilities of each um, pattern working out. And do you know what? I think those probabilities are still relevant today. Um, so, so I enjoyed that one. I, I tell you what I did get into a lot was um, trading psychology books. And I, and I can't really remember off the top of my head, but I kind of realized that that is maybe more important than being a good technical analyst. You know, um, you can learn all the chart patterns and you can learn all the candle formations and the candle patterns and everything else. But putting into practice, you really, really have to have control of your mind and the discipline and the patience and everything that we traders know about. But um, I did struggle yeah. with it. You know, I still yeah. struggle. I still put positions on that are too big for my account because I, I see this pattern. I think this is really going to work. And I, and I end up finding myself getting carried away with a position that's too big for my account. And of course, trades, some trades do go wrong. And then when you do lose money and you've traded too big, it's, it's such a kick. Um, kick in the painful part of your body. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, because cause it's not just the loss that you've sustained. It's, it's a knock-on effect. You know, then, you know, you, you don't have the confidence to put the next trade on or you put the trade on too small. So, you know, it really is um, so important to maintain the discipline, just trade robot-like, you know. Same yeah. size as a trade. Don't get carried away. Um, don't get too confident. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I had that tendency too where you're trying to hit a home run ball, trying to turn something small into something substantial, uh, instead of being happy with 30% returns a year, 40% returns, you're trying to turn 10 into 50, you know, and in a hurry or, you know, 20 into 100. Uh, but one of the most difficult things for me still, Jason, is uh, uh, my entries are probably my strength. Um, I have a hard time riding things to targets of having the patience for the hold. And the only way I've been able to overcome that is by taking partials and then trailing my stop. And I actually at times have to walk away or manage a trade from a much longer time frame. Um, how are you with that holding? You know, everyone sets up their strategy before they enter a trade, you know, why they're getting in, where they're wrong, and what they're looking for. Um, if you're good at that, maybe you can mentor me and tell me uh, how you stay till your targets. What's well, going on in your head? I mean, you, you really have just summed it up. And there's not a lot more I can add to that. Um, what I found, again, really is down to trading size. So if I'm being a good boy and I'm risking only 1% or 2% on a trade, I'm not emotionally involved. Like you say, when you're doing the analysis, you're setting your targets, your head is clear, um, you're not emotionally involved in a trade. And so mm -hmm. you're thinking mm -hmm. to yourself, you're looking at this um, chart and you're saying, okay, the market can get, can get to here. There's nothing really in the way of, of us reaching this target. The problem is when you've got a position on that is maybe bigger than it should be, you get all excited about the profit and you feel like I've got to grab that profit. I've got to grab that profit. Yeah. Um, First daylight syndrome. Yeah, exactly. I have all kinds of names for this, uh, this thing where people are so used to getting stopped out that they have small profits. They take it and you, and you need the runner to make up for the mistakes and I'm yeah. uh, just wondering, you know, how you handle it. I actually got a good tip from somebody that I'll share with you. Um, when you're thinking about coming out of a trade, mm -hmm. ask yourself if you would reverse here. Yeah, I like that. Okay. You know, so, and if the answer is no, you leave things alone and you walk away because, you know, uh, you're tempted to take it, but there's no reason uh, for, you know, to take the other side of the market and you go, no, I wouldn't, I'm long. I wouldn't short it here. So then you stay. So, you yeah. know, that, that's my, uh, I ask myself that now, would you reverse stale? And if the answer is no, then I stay. So I like, that. I, I, I like, forgot who taught me that one, but yeah, I like that one. The yeah. other thing I, I try to do and I advise people, you know, customize subscribers or whatever to do is to scale out because you 
satisfy that urge to take some profit if you at least sell 25% of your position and you know then you think to yourself okay I've, 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 secu- I've banked something and I do think the market will keep going but I just needed to put some money take some money off the table just so I'm you know can relax a little bit and that also then gives you options because how often do you see the market go in the direction that you think it will but then come back retest the level where you just got in so many right. people need their stop up to the entry point that doesn't work for me too many times I've got stopped out at my entry point and I'm thinking, why am I, why am I getting out here? This is the whole, I, I, I wanted to get in at this level. This is a good support level. Why am I getting out again? So I, that doesn't work for me moving my, my trailing my stop straight to the, the entry. Yeah. yeah. If it does yeah. for some people, it's great. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying for me, it doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. I'd rather scale out of the position as it hits, hits some targets. And then if it comes back to my entry point, I can, I've actually then got some bullets to get back in again. So that, that kind of works. I like me. that. You can recommit with profits rather than principal yeah. if you still like it. Yeah. Uh, how about, Jason, uh, instruments that I, I know you do a lot of FX. Uh, any other instruments that you like to day trade? Uh, stock indexes? You mess around with them? Yeah. Well, for my subscribers, I do six Forex pairs. I do oil, gold, Zex, Eurostocks, FTSE, and then I do S&P, Dow, and NASDAQ. So... I do like to keep an eye on all of them. I don't trade the indices so much. Not really sure why. I used to love the S&P, but for some reason I've just become more FX focused. Um, but every now and then I'll have a dabble in the indices. I, I find oil really difficult. For some reason I just cannot trade oil. Um, but I do like gold. Okay. All right. So um, let me ask you this. Uh, do you look for certain risk return on your trades before you take them in a, in a day trading environment? Uh, maybe you, you can't get the huge R to R's because you just have the average daily trading range if you capture the whole range. So how much uh, are you shooting for in a daily range? Say, uh, what's the ATR in Euro right now? About 70 pips or so? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So uh, what do you shoot for in that range on a day trade? Well, I guess I am a day trader, but I, I will end up running positions overnight quite okay. often. So okay. I am a swing trader. I'm not really a scalper. Scalping to me is just too much like hard work. I think I'm just too old for it. I've just been doing it for too long. I don't really want to sit in front of a screen for eight, nine hours. I know a lot of people like that. They're entertained by it. In fact, I was, met a guy last night who's a super wealthy guy, was head of, X, head of X, FX at a bank. Um, he does not need to work ever again. And he sits in front of a screen for nine or 10 hours a day trading. And he has six-figure P&L swings during the week. And wow. I think it's amazing yeah. that he can do that. You know, he's absolutely absorbed in the markets. But that doesn't work for me. I, for some reason, I just, mm-hmm. I just can't focus like that. You like to smell the roses and uh, enjoy yeah. the... Beautiful country country. you live in, right? (laughs) Yeah, well, I certainly don't have that that kind of money. So, um, but anyway. um, How how are you guys handling COVID over there in Thailand? Oh, I'm I'm not in Thailand anymore, funnily enough. Oh, where are you? I'm back in the UK at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Um, But Thailand, uh, actually, I was there during the COVID thing. I've only just got to England. Uh, Thailand, pretty much unaffected. Life is very much back to normal there. The government really... Um, shut the place down very, very quickly. They reacted very, very quickly. And so but the problem is they're not opening up now. So okay. um, you can't yeah, really I mean, you can't go there. You can't really get they're in. They're not no. accepting people, right. Yeah, it's uh, very difficult. Even, with a, even if you're a resident, it's very difficult to actually get back in the country. So, so why the move from Nirvana back to the UK? Uh, well, my kids want to go to school here. So I'm... Uh, and because the issue is if I put them in boarding school, I'll probably never see them at the moment. So for, for the time being, I'm going to be in the UK until until we can travel more freely, I guess. Yeah. Okay. It's difficult for everyone. Where are you okay. located, Bill? Are you in the UK? San Diego. San Diego. Okay. How are you getting on over there? Um, you know, uh, I, I, I can't still kind of isolate. Uh, I don't go... You know, there's no karaoke anymore, and uh, I just, you know, uh, have a very small universe of people that I see, and uh, I'm not interested in taking risk with COVID. Mm-hmm. So, too, right? 
Yeah. Open. So anyway, uh, you know, uh, the U S right now, uh, uh, now that you're in the UK, I should probably just go take over your house in Thailand and watch what's going to happen in the U S election on TV instead of being in the middle of this morass. But, uh, uh, and when we get back to uh, your trading style, uh, favorite indicator or trigger for you? For your um, trades? Okay. Or is it just pattern recognition? Yeah, I think it mostly is pattern recognition. My number one rule is um, trading the direction of the trend. So for me, in my time frame, I'll look at the daily four hour. That's the kind of trend that I'm looking to follow. I'll use the one hour time frame to kind of fine tune the entries and the exits and look for the minor levels. So more, more as targets really. Um, actually quite interesting. And I wish I had got my charts up for you now, but yesterday was a That's real one. Yeah, definitely. Yesterday for the markets that I trade was a real 100 day moving average day. It looked like uh, a lot of the stock markets, just bounced right off the 100-day moving average that some of the dollar pairs did. So for me, um, I didn't have a look at the market until a, for, um, for an hour before I chat to you. But when I last looked, those levels were holding. And although I don't have a position right now, but I, I would definitely be looking to get a risk on position on today if we, if we dip near um, yesterday's lows. It just looks like 100-day moving average in so many markets was the magic one yesterday. What's uh, your Twitter handle again, Jason? Day trade what? Day trade signals. Okay. I just won. There we go. Okay, so there's Jason. And there's his background. And I wanted to show your website. Oh, thanks. That's daytradeideas.co.uk. So, so, reliable. 33 years, you, you, you know, you're an old guy like me, reliable, <laughs> look at this, maximize, 33 years, I love the number three. All right, mm -hmm. so this is how you reach uh, Jason. Uh, That's it, there or Twitter. I've just started a chat room, actually, I just started it last week, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but when I was in Thailand, I was building villas, and I just couldn't do that, and then commit to you know looking after people on a more full-time basis so i'm excited that i got that going last week and we're off to a really good start actually so i'm really enjoying that well jason uh you know next time we're, i want to see your charts and talk about how you do it because you know after 33 years um you learn a few things right and sure, um, you know if you're as well as you're me, not then. you either get good or you're just a masochist and then <laughs> after three de three decades, what do you yeah, think? No, I think maybe I'm a masochist. I'm not sure. And you're always <laughs> welcome in Thailand. I've invited you there a couple of times before, uh, haven't I? I know. I would love. I would love to go. I would yeah. love to go. One day, you, you know, you, you know what COVID teach taught me. Mm. Uh, and I, you know, I would talk about it that t you know time is our most precious uh, precious currency. Is uh, not to put off things that you want to do thinking mm. that you're always going to have the opportunity to do it, do it now. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, what I've learned is, uh, you know, uh, you want to travel, you want to move, don't talk about it, it, it take the action. Yeah. So um, great talking to a veteran like you, Jason. I want to also thank you for uh, getting the word out about our Trader Summit that's going to begin in a few hours. And, um, you would be a great guest for a future one and, uh, really it was nice talking to you and, uh, hope to do it again. Let's get in touch and maybe set something up in December so we Super. could, uh, talk in a little more detail with your charts and your methodology. How's that? I'd love that. And yeah, the Trader Summit looks amazing. Uh, the, the people you've got on there, I'm really impressed with it. Um, so good luck with that. I'm, I'm yeah. Thank you. See how you all get on. Yeah, but, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to you know listening and doing yeah, a little moderating too. and uh, mm. and uh, you know uh, missing football this weekend. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, really great talking to you, my trading warrior brother. Thanks so much for coming on late notice, and everyone uh, check Jason out. 
if that's your style. The guy has seen everything. Uh, he, he's seen his mistakes, probably hundreds of traders' mistakes. So let Jason help you not make them. And uh, have a great weekend, buddy. Thanks so much, Dale. Always good to talk to you. Appreciate it. All the best. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Jason Sen at Day Trade Ideas on Twitter. And that's going to be a wrap, everyone. We'll see you at the summit. And uh, bring a pad of paper and a pen and write down the important things. You know, sometimes just one idea can change your life. One good idea. And with that being said, we're going to wrap this uh, episode of Face Up. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And we'll see everyone in a few hours. You're very welcome. You're welcome, Alexandro, Sa, Monica. And thank you once again, Jason. Talk to you soon. Adios.